The COM-B model is at the heart of the behavior change wheel framework. This model proposes that behavior is a function of three essential components, capability, opportunity, and motivation. These three components interact to influence behavior change. Capability refers to both the physical and psychological ability to perform a behavior. Opportunity encompasses the physical and social factors in our environment that make the behavior possible. Motivation includes all brain processes that energize and direct our behavior. The COM-B model shows how these components interact. Each component influences behavior directly, while behavior can also influence capability and motivation in return. Each component is further divided into two subtypes. Capability consists of physical and psychological capability. Opportunity encompasses physical and social opportunity, and motivation includes reflective and automatic processes. An important concept in behavior change is the activation threshold. This graph shows the relationship between motivation and ease of use. For a behavior to occur, the combination of motivation and ease of use must cross the activation threshold. When a behavior is very easy to do, even low motivation can be sufficient. The COM-B model provides a comprehensive framework to understand why behaviors occur and how to change them effectively by addressing capability, opportunity, and motivation. Capability is a key component of the COM-B model for behavior change. In the COM-B model, capability works alongside motivation and opportunity to influence behavior. Capability is divided into two distinct types, physical capability and psychological capability. Physical capability refers to the physical skills, strength, and stamina required to perform a behavior. Psychological capability includes the knowledge, understanding, and mental skills needed for a behavior. Let's look at some examples of capability in health behaviors. Physical capability includes manual dexterity for proper toothbrushing, strength for regular exercise, and motor skills for food preparation. Psychological capability involves understanding nutrition labels, knowledge of disease transmission, and memory to take medication correctly. To design effective interventions, we must assess and build capability when needed. This involves identifying capability gaps, addressing physical needs through training or aids, and psychological needs through education. Building capability is essential for successful behavior change. Let's see the COM-B model in action with a practical example, hand washing. First, we must address capability. This involves teaching the correct hand washing technique, ensuring people have both the physical skills and knowledge to wash hands effectively. Next, we need to create opportunity. This means providing accessible hand washing facilities with soap and water in both indoor and outdoor settings. Finally, we must address motivation. This includes both reflective motivation through education about the importance of hand washing and automatic motivation by establishing habits through visual cues like posters. An effective hand washing intervention addresses all three combi components simultaneously. By combining education, access to facilities, and motivation building strategies, we can successfully promote proper hand washing behavior. We now transition from the COM-B model to the complete behavior change wheel framework. The COM-B model provided us with the core components of behavior, capability, opportunity, and motivation. The behavior change wheel builds upon these components, forming a comprehensive framework for designing effective interventions. The behavior change wheel consists of three concentric layers. At its core is the COM-B model we've explored, representing the sources of behavior. The middle wheel contains nine intervention functions that can be used to address the behavior components. The outer wheel presents seven policy categories that support and enable these interventions. The intervention functions are the practical methods we can employ to change behavior. The behavior change wheel provides a systematic approach to intervention design, ensuring that all relevant factors are considered. In the following sections, we'll explore each component of this wheel in greater detail. The middle wheel of the behavior change wheel contains nine intervention functions. Let's focus on the first one, education. Education involves increasing knowledge or understanding through the provision of information about behavior and its consequences. 
There are various ways to implement education interventions in public health and other contexts. Education primarily addresses psychological capability in the COMB model as it builds the knowledge needed for behavior change. In the middle wheel of the behavior change wheel, we find incentivization as one of the nine intervention functions. Incentivization involves creating an expectation of reward to change behavior. This intervention function works by providing external motivation through rewards. These can be financial, social, or personal. Incentivization operates through positive reinforcement and can help establish new habits over time. Here's how positive reinforcement can be structured to support behavior change. External motivators like financial rewards or recognition can drive behavior in the desired direction. The celebration of achievements is also a powerful form of social incentive. In public health, incentivization has been successfully applied in various contexts. Training is a key intervention function in the behavior change wheel. Located in the middle wheel, training focuses on imparting skills to improve capability to perform behaviors. Training includes various activities such as workshops, demonstrations, role-playing, and hands-on practice sessions. Interactive training approaches can significantly enhance skill development and knowledge retention. Training primarily addresses the capability component of the COMB model by improving both physical and psychological skills. Effective training programs should be structured around clear learning objectives and incorporate various teaching methods. Environmental restructuring is an intervention function that focuses on changing the physical or social context to support behavior change. Within the behavior change wheel, environmental restructuring is located in the middle wheel, among other intervention functions. Environmental restructuring involves changing aspects of the physical or social environment to make target behaviors easier to perform or unwanted behaviors harder to engage in. Physical context refers to the material environment around us. Changes to physical context can significantly influence behavior by making certain actions easier or more difficult. Let's look at some examples of how environmental restructuring can be implemented. Physical restructuring includes redesigning spaces, adding infrastructure, or changing the accessibility of resources. For example, improving building standards after natural disasters. Social restructuring involves modifying social norms, group dynamics, or social environments. This social ring design encourages social interaction while maintaining distancing. One popular application of environmental restructuring is nudge theory, which involves subtle environmental changes that guide behavior without restricting choice. Environmental restructuring is most effective when combined with other intervention functions and supported by appropriate policy categories. By restructuring environments to support desired behaviors, we can create sustainable behavior change that doesn't rely solely on individual motivation. The middle wheel of the behavior change wheel contains several intervention functions. This section focuses on restriction. Restriction involves using rules, policies, or barriers to reduce the opportunity to engage in target behaviors. Restriction works by limiting options, creating barriers, implementing rules, and enforcing boundaries to prevent unwanted behaviors. Restriction is commonly used in public health interventions. Examples include smoking bans, age restrictions for alcohol, speed limits, and controlling access to medications. While restriction can be highly effective, it's important to consider that it may create resistance. It works best when combined with other interventions and requires proper monitoring and enforcement. A classic example of restriction in everyday life is traffic lights. They restrict movement to improve safety and coordinate traffic flow through clear rules, visual signals, timing systems, and enforcement through penalties. In summary, restriction is a powerful intervention function that works by limiting opportunities for undesired behaviors. The outer wheel of the behavior change wheel contains seven policy categories that can support behavior change interventions. These policy categories include guidelines, environmental and social planning, legislation, service provision, communication and marketing, fiscal measures, and regulation. In this section, we'll focus on guidelines, the first policy category of the behavior change wheel. 
Guidelines are documents that recommend or mandate practices in line with policy objectives. They translate policy intentions into practical actions. Guidelines typically include evidence-based recommendations, best practices for implementation, standards for professional conduct, and protocols for specific situations. The policy process begins with identifying a problem and moves through stages including developing alternative solutions, analysis, and recommendations. Guidelines fit within a broader policy framework, starting from local documents and procedures up to formal legislation and statutes. Developing effective guidelines involves a cyclical process of monitoring, research, drafting, consultation, finalization, and impact assessment. In public health, guidelines are widely used to promote healthy behaviors. Examples include World Health Organization physical activity recommendations, dietary guidelines, hand hygiene protocols, and smoking cessation practice guidelines. Guidelines are a powerful policy tool that can support multiple intervention functions of the behavior change wheel, including education, training, and enablement. By creating clear, evidence-based guidelines, policymakers can support individuals and organizations in making positive behavior changes. Let's explore regulation as one of the policy categories in the behavior change wheel. Regulation is positioned in the outer wheel of the behavior change wheel framework. Regulation involves establishing rules, principles, and standards that govern conduct or procedures. Key components of regulation include formal rules, monitoring mechanisms, enforcement procedures, and compliance incentives. The regulatory process typically involves multiple steps, initiating, proposing, gathering comments, and issuing final regulations. In public health, regulations include food safety standards, tobacco controls, healthcare facility certifications, and pharmaceutical approval processes. Effective regulation requires compliance mechanisms that encourage adherence to the established rules and standards. Regulation directly connects to several intervention functions, including restriction, environmental restructuring, and enablement. Regulation policies provide the necessary structure and accountability to support effective behavior change interventions. Fiscal measures form a key policy category in the behavior change wheel. These measures use the tax system and other financial instruments to influence or control behavior. In the behavior change wheel, fiscal measures appear on the outer ring, representing policy options that can be implemented to support various intervention functions. Fiscal policy tools include both revenue collection through taxation and government expenditure. These tools can be strategically designed to encourage or discourage specific behaviors. Taxes are commonly used to discourage unhealthy or environmentally harmful behaviors. Examples include sin taxes on tobacco and alcohol, carbon taxes on emissions, and sugar taxes on sweetened beverages. On the flip side, governments can provide economic incentives to promote desired behaviors. These include tax rebates to encourage spending, subsidies for behaviors like renewable energy adoption, and tax breaks for specific industries. For fiscal measures to be effective, there must be consequences for non-compliance. Tax systems include penalties and enforcement mechanisms that help ensure the desired behavioral changes are achieved. In summary, fiscal measures represent a powerful tool in behavior change strategies. By adjusting financial incentives and disincentives, policymakers can influence behaviors at a population level, supporting other intervention functions in the behavior change wheel. Service provision is a key policy category in the outer wheel of the behavior change wheel framework. It focuses on delivering services that support behavior change interventions. Service provision involves establishing or funding services that directly facilitate behavior change. These services can be delivered through various channels, including healthcare systems, community organizations, and digital platforms. Examples of service provision include health screening programs, smoking cessation clinics, nutrition counseling services, and mobile health applications that support users in adopting healthier behaviors. When implementing service provision policies, it's important to follow a structured service delivery process. This typically includes service definition, design, implementation, and testing. Service provision can take many forms across different sectors. In education, 
Services may include curriculum development, student support, and special education programs. Effective service provision often adopts a person-centered approach where services are designed around the needs of individuals. This circular model shows how services for children and families can be organized with the client at the center. Service provision doesn't operate in isolation. It works alongside other policy categories, such as guidelines, communication, and fiscal measures to create comprehensive behavior change strategies. By establishing accessible and effective services, policymakers can provide the support people need to change their behaviors for better health outcomes. As we conclude our exploration of the behavior change wheel and COMB model, let's recap what we've learned. The COMB model pinpoints why behaviors occur by examining three key components. Capability, our physical and psychological ability to perform behaviors. Opportunity, the physical and social factors in our environment that enable behavior. And motivation, our conscious and unconscious processes that drive behavior. These three components interact to influence our behavior patterns. While the behavior change wheel guides us on which interventions and policies to deploy, to effectively change behavior. The wheel provides a structured approach to designing interventions, helping practitioners select appropriate strategies based on the specific COM-B factors they need to address. By harnessing the power of the COM-B model and the behavior change wheel, public health professionals can systematically design, deliver, and evaluate powerful public health interventions that drive meaningful behavior change and improve health outcomes.